Welcome to Miss Smith's Math Tutorials. I'm Miss Smith. In the next few videos, we're going to be talking about systems of equations. There are three different ways to solve systems of equations in Math 1. The first way would be through graphing, um, which is what this video is going to be all about. The second way would be through substitution, and the third way would be through elimination. So in my, my next couple videos will also be about solving systems of equations. So essentially, what a system of equations is, is a set of two linear equations. So you'll notice that these are both in y equals mx plus b form. So these are two linear equations that could both be graphed in a straight line on a graph, which we'll do in a second. And we want to know exactly at what point these two lines would intersect. That's all systems of equations is about, is finding out where the two lines cross. Because at that exact spot where they cross, that will be the solution to this equation and the solution to this equation. We want to get an x, y point. So our final answer will be an, an x, y point. You would want to use the graphing method to solve systems of equations when you have two lines that are already in slope intercept form or very close to being into slope intercept form. You obviously would need a graph either provided or you need to be able to have graph paper with you to, to be able to sketch this out. The other thing is you would want to make sure that once we do graph it that you can find the intersecting point at a very clear point. So it should be a very clear x, y point. It should be two whole numbers. So if you end up with something that doesn't cross at a clear point and it's it's a fraction or decimal, you would not want to use the graphing method. You would use one of the other methods that we'll talk about in other videos. So that's when you would want to use graphing. So now let's look at some examples of that. In my first example, you always want to check and make sure you're lines are both in y equals mx plus b form. In this case, these are, so we can go ahead and graph them. I'm going to graph my first line in black. So I plot my first point at negative 2, that's my y-intercept. And my slope tells me how to move from there. So this is a positive 4, which is the same thing as positive 4 over 1. So we want to move up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. And you could keep going, up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 over 1. I'm going to graph my next line in blue. So my slope intercept again is at negative 2, and some of you guys are going to be guessing what happens here. So negative 2, my slope tells me how to move. This is a negative 1 over positive 1. So I would move down 1 over to the right 1. Down 1 over to the right 1. And we'll connect those. So we can clearly see here that these two lines cross at an exact point, and that point is 0 on the x-axis and negative 2 on the y-axis. So that is the intersecting point. Some of you guys might have guessed that up here when you saw your y-intercepts were both negative 2. If you did, good for you, but I'm going to assume that we didn't, so we would need to actually graph this out to see that point. Let's look at a second example. So in this case, you want to make sure both your equations are in y equals mx plus b form, slope-intercept form, and they are. So I'm good to go ahead and start graphing. I'm going to graph this top one in black. So I plot my y-intercept at negative 1. And from there, I need to, my slope is a positive 1. So it's the same thing as positive 1 over positive 1. So I'll move up 1, right 1. And you could keep going up 1, right 1. And I'm going to graph my second line in blue again. So my y-intercept is at negative 4. And my slope tells me to go up 4, right 1. So I'll go up 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, right 1. 
Then I could keep going up four, one, two, three, four, right one. So here we can clearly see that this, these two lines intersect at one, zero. Let's look at these next two examples. My first question is always the same. Are my two lines in slope intercept form? And I can see that both of these lines are not in slope intercept form. In order to be able to graph them, I have to get them in slope intercept form. So let's rewrite the first one x minus 4y equals negative 4. My goal is to get y alone, so I'm going to start by subtracting x from this side and that side. I'm left with negative 4y equals, now I can't combine negative 4 and negative x, but I can rewrite them in standard form. Remember standard form dictates I put the letter first, variable first, and constant second. Uh, my y is almost alone, but not quite. I still have to divide out that negative 4. So I'm left with y equals negative 1 over negative 4. That reduces to positive 1 fourth x. And negative 4 divided by negative 4 reduces to positive 1. Okay, so now I've got that first equation in slope-intercept form. I need to do that second equation as well. So I'm going to rewrite it. 5x minus 4y equals 12. I'm going to start by subtracting my 5x from both sides. I get negative 4y equals, I can't combine those two, but I can rewrite them in standard form, keeping their signs. So keeping that negative 5x negative and keeping that positive 12 positive. Last step to get y alone is divide out the negative 4. So we get y equals negative 5 divided by negative 4. Well the numbers don't reduce but the signs reduce to a positive. So 5 over 4x. Positive 12 divided by negative 4 will reduced to negative 3. Okay, so now I have two lines that I can go ahead and graph. Check to make sure I'm still centered. Yes, okay. I'm going to graph this first line in black. So I do my, uh, um, my y-intercept at positive 1. My slope tells me to move up 1, right 4. So up 1, right 1, 2, 3, 4. I'm going to do this next line in blue. So my starting point is at negative 3. And from there, it says I move up 5 over 4. So up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 over to the right 4, since it's positive. 1, 2, 3, 4. So I can clearly see that these two lines intersect at 4, 2. So that would be my answer. In this next example, I always want to check to make sure my equations are in slope-intercept form. I see this top one is not, and this bottom one is. I know it doesn't look like y equals mx plus b, but we should remember that when we have x equals a number, that is in slope-intercept form, and it's actually going to end up being a vertical line. So we'll, we'll graph that one in just a second. Let's get this top one in slope-intercept form. So I want to get my y alone. I'm going to start by subtracting my x from both sides. I have negative y equals negative x plus 2. I need to divide out the negative 1. I know that y looks almost alone, but it's not quite because it's got that negative in front of it. So that's why we're dividing out a negative 1. 
And finally, we have y equals negative 1 divided by negative 1. That's just a positive 1. So we would just write that as x. So that's an understood 1x. 2 divided by negative 1 is going to be negative 2. Okay, so now I have two equations that are in slope-intercept form that I can go ahead and graph. I'm going to graph this first one in black. So my y-intercept is negative 2, and my slope from here tells me to move up 1, right 1. So up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1. I'm going to graph this next line in blue. So this line is a little unique in that, like I said, it's x equals a number. All I know to plot is negative 2 on the x-axis, and that's going to be a vertical line. Now this one, I can very easily see that these two lines cross right there at that point. So that point is going to be negative 2 on the x-axis and negative 4 on the y-axis. These last two examples that I'm going to show you um, are kind of unique cases in what happens, um, but they are something that you're going to see pretty frequently, so you need to be able to identify them when you come across them. In this first example, I, I always ask myself, are my two lines in my two equations in slope intercept form uh, and in this case they are so I'm gonna go ahead and graph them I'm gonna graph this first one in black my y-intercept is at negative 2 and my slope tells me to move up 5 right 1 so up 1 2 3 4 5 right 1 Okay. For the second equation, my y-intercept is at negative 5, so that's going to be down here. And my slope also tells me to move up 5 over 1, over to the right 1. So I'm going to move up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right 1. And I could keep going. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, right 1. So something interesting happens here. Um, you'll notice that we created two parallel lines. So since these lines are parallel, they will never intersect. Um, so since that's the case, they will never have an intersection point or a crossing point. So we call this no solution. And a lot of students just like to write N S no solution. Now, some of you might notice that our slope was the same in both of these equations, but our y-intercepts were different. So really, you don't even have to graph these. If you can look at your equations and tell the slope is the same, the y-intercepts are different, automatically that's a no solution. You know that those are going to be two parallel lines. So I didn't even have to graph these other than to show you what was going to happen. But if you can identify that, you'll be good. In number six, my first question is always, are my two lines in slope intercept form? Uh, this one is, this one is not. So my first step is going to be to get this one in slope intercept form. So it's almost there, but my y is not quite alone. It's got that 2 connected with it. That's a 2 times y. I undo times by doing division. So I end up with y equals 4 divided by 2 would be 2x. 2 divided by 2 is going to be positive 1. So now I have two equations, this one and this one, that I can go ahead and graph. Now, you might notice at this point that this equation is y equals 2x plus 1. This equation is also y equals 2x plus 1. So let me go ahead, I'm just going to go ahead and graph, we'll say this one, just so we can see it. So. So 
So I graphed this first line, and I know that if I graph this second one in a different color, it's going to overlay that, that same line because these are the same lines. So what that tells you is when you have two overlaying lines, our answer is infinite solutions. So that means that anything, any number, for as long as this line extends, any number on here uh, on the line would be a solution to uh, this equation. So those are two kind of unique examples and you need to be able to identify them. Um, but as, as a whole, that's um, solving systems of equations through graphing. So in my next video, we're going to talk about solving systems of equations through substitution. So using more algebra to solve it instead of graphing. Alright, this has been Miss Miss Math Tutorials.